Hi guys and welcome to the channel. In today's episode we are finally going to be getting our electronic parking brake repaired. Basically I've decided to get the parking brake repaired professionally. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Obviously still recovering from uh, my operation and mostly the reason is is because the majority of the work has to happen underneath the car and uh, we don't have a ramp as yet so I don't really feel like climbing about underneath so unless something goes very wrong this job's gonna cost me 350 quid but that does include the rear shoes as well and you get a warranty for a whole year so I think that's a pretty good deal and it's certainly cheaper than some of the other places I've looked at so I think this is worth uh, looking at so let's go inside meet the guys and see what they can do specialist tools look that you need <laughs> The screws are new, yeah. but the cables have been gouged on this side, which means they've been on there a while. Yeah, it's got firmware 8 on it, so it must be a later revision. So it's locked on at the minute. Yeah. Um, emergency release hasn't been pulled, but I'm about to pull it. If it'll let me. Yeah, it's just stuck solid. There we go. Wow. So I can tell just off the sound yep. that the gears are okay. Yeah, yeah. And generally the motors in these will be okay. Yeah. Because they're not used as much. If it was on another vehicle, the same module. I'd be changing that. Right. I just don't change them on these because they're not even a quarter of the way through the life every no. time I look at them. No. What I see a lot of the times is damage to these. Yep. Which shows that they've They've just tried the best on fitting them. Right. Whereas I would, <laughs> yes, I would <laughs> yeah. attempt. I, I'd be disappointed if I did that, but I can understand. Yeah. If, if you've never done it before, it's difficult. Yeah. There we go. So that should be back. Like that. Right. right. And then you'll see when I put the other one on. Nine times out of ten, the cause of it is this arm rusted up. Yeah. And if it's been sat for like a month, two months, it'll rust up. Yeah. It, when they go into four courts for sale, they'll rust up. And that arm won't move. And so it'll apply yeah. the brake and it'll work fine. And then you take it off and that won't go back. Yeah. So it's rusted up. And so the next time it runs, after that, the cables will go too far in and that's what... Right, right. And generally, 99% of the time, it's just used at the cause of it. Yeah. Not the module. Oh. Even though the module's got a bad reputation. Yeah. Because I do so many of them, I've only used three makes over the years and I've just was hit lucky yeah. that all three makes were made exactly right. Yeah. And it's only when I get other people's in that they've fitted that I've started to realise that there's so many out there that are wrong. Wow. They're designed to work by moving out here. Yeah. Not this way. Yep. Yeah. What they do is they put too much brake lining on the tops. And they can be worse than that. I don't know whether I've got any. They also make sometimes that hole is it's just like round, it's just a a round hole like that, that big. Not slotted. Yeah. Which makes them a nightmare to fit. And you can't get them to fit right. You can't get them to adjust right. And everything just goes haywire. What Dave's telling me is obviously, which I kind of covered, but I'm just going to do it while I've got the camera here, is obviously look at the difference, how much meat you've got there on the shoe remaining, whereas you've got meat right to the edge. 
and as he says, as you expand, you're getting like an oval created, and so you're getting a high point, a high spot, and a low spot that's touching more, uh, and that's what can jam on. So that is the reason why, when you look at these, see how easy that's moving. Yeah, of course. Would you ever grease it? Sometimes a little bit here. Yeah. It's got that little spring. Right. It's like a, it's like a. A bent washer, which just adds a little bit of tension. Yeah. Some of them I'll have them on. Uh, so that hasn't, that's just straight. Yeah. So that maybe that's why. Right, yeah. I could work that loose. But also on there. It's not straight, is it? You can see it's and that's out. that's not been caused by that being pulled. It's just the way it's made. without even these springs. There's no spring at all. We think, oh, it doesn't need that. And what it does, it keeps that trap door shut. Yep. Because the first time when you fit it up, there'll be a little bit of slack. Yeah. And it could, it'll just slip through without the spring. It'll just pop right through. And right. you've done all that work for nothing. Mark yeah, yeah. where it just goes on and stays clipped. And you've got to make sure it stays there as you're putting the brakes you want. Yeah. Now I can't get through to it. There we go. Just doing that one little bit there can take 45 minutes, really? an hour, because if people don't know the the way to do it. I, can't, I couldn't even teach it either because <laughs> you just pick it up out of frustration. That's how it glides mm -hmm. along there. This is probably the most common, is people not adjusting this side. It moves the arm back of the brake shoe. So any slack that's in the cable, yeah. It'll take that away. Okay. And that's what you want for, for longevity of the unit. You want there to be no slack on the cable. So we, you, can, you can't take it up with the adjustment of this wheel. No. On here, you can only take it up with that. Do it, yeah. Depending on where you bought the brake shoes from, the manufacturers will just put that wherever they want. Some of them put them right back so that it's there's nothing at all. Others will leave them right out and it's just luck when you fit it. If you've not touched it. If you've not touched it, whether it's hit or miss. So it might, if you get that wrong, it might only last six months. Wow. Some of the springs as well, they don't, it can take you 10 minutes just getting the spring just into those two little bits. Yeah. Those are Monica Wynn. So the pick is the tool to have to do this job. Well, it's the On this side, yeah, I can do the other side because of the orientation of it, just with my finger. Yeah. But the most useful tool is this. To do any brake shoes on any, any, <laughs> on any vehicle. Straight in, yeah. So you're not bending that, and you've just got to pull it out to get that in. If I feel like it's had a different module put on here, or someone's been here before me, then they have. Uh, C clips, like little sir clips on the cable, yep. which affect the length of the cable. So if you look in there, there's still slack on the cable. Okay. But the way I've set that up, there should be no slack. Right. I've just got a little clip okay, yep. on the cable. So this has had a new module fitted at okay. some point. I can't tell the age of it because we'd have to take yeah. it out. 
but I can tell off the screws that we took off that it's new. Yep. But they've not put those clips on. Right. So again there, we're losing... A mil, maybe? Not no, that much? No more. Yeah? More, a lot more. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it, up to up to maybe one and a half centimetres. Bloody hell. Just off those clips not being on and that slack on the cable. So, so if you're fitting new cables, you you want to check whether it's got a clip on it, on a clip on it or not. Yeah. And if it hasn't, you've got to order that separately. Yeah. They were only a simple little clip, yeah. but that's going to affect it so much that you can see me pulling it out. Oh, there's loads. So somebody's got to the point where the parking brake's failed. Yeah. They've done the, they've gone to the garage or they've thought to themselves, well, I just need a new module. So we've gone and bought a new module, seven, eight hundred pounds. They've fitted it and it's probably not even lasted eight months of a year. Which they're going to be annoyed about. Yeah. Or because they're not put those on. So what does the clip look like? Well, have you just got one of so it's literally It's like yeah. an E uh, yeah, an yeah. E or a C clip yeah. or what yeah. And it just slit, sits in a little little groove on the on the cable. Just holds it back. It it can be complicated because on some of the models they've got different uh, different back plates and they compensate for without having it. Okay. So some of them aren't actually supposed to have them on. Right. But la then later ones, after a certain year, which I can't, I've tried to put my finger on it, but I can't work it out what, when why it suddenly overwards. changed. Yeah. So I just fit them on every single one, whether they need them or not. So now with that fitted, uh, touch. We've virtually taken all the slack away. There's what, a couple of mi couple of mil if you're lucky. Yeah. I wanted to take that away. I could take that back off. Yeah. Oh, so you've still got another adjustment there, Und yeah? Undo that. You can't do it once it's fitted. Yeah. Even though Land Rover will tell you to do all this, undo that, tap it with a hammer, um, and then tighten it back up again, which just never has never worked. You can't get this on. Mm -hmm. Then you'd have to go back and move that back up. Right. It all depends on... Sometimes it'll, it'll just go on easy, which I'm hoping now. Uh, yeah, just like that. <laughs> but if you've overdone it on that, you might not get that on. Yeah. And then so then you've got to take it all back off again. either side right okay and there's plenty of thread left on there so I'll take it off again and then just check with the wheels free wheel if one moves the other will always move because it's turning turn around the other one as well yep yeah. yep yeah, that's fine So these vehicles are prone to the parking brake failing, which I'm sure you're aware of if you've got one. Um, but the key thing that I took away from the conversation I was having with Dave was, yes, you can do the job yourself. If you're a fairly um, you know, capable mechanic, DIY mechanic, it's not an impossible job to get access to that module, to remove it, to replace the cables, to set everything up. But the thing that really sort of hit home with me is he was saying there's so many little tiny details that you need to make sure you cover that you probably wouldn't be aware of that if you don't do the longevity of that repair is going to be massively reduced and and that's what it's all about the last thing you want to do is spend a whole weekend 
laying on your back, stripping your parking brake, replacing all the cogs, replacing all the cables, because you don't really know what's wrong with it, uh, getting it all rebuilt, and yes, it works because you've sort of freed something off somewhere along the line, but then six months down the road, it fails again, and you've got to do the whole job again. Now, I'm always on YouTube looking at uh, different projects and different channels that are doing different repairs. And what I have noticed is a lot of the channels that have featured a handbrake repair in the past have had to come back to do it again uh, for a different reason or for the same reason within six to 10, 12 months. And I think that is a testament to what Dave was saying, is if you don't do it right, it's only gonna last a short amount of time. So if you wanna do the electronic parking brake repair yourself, there are plenty of guides on YouTube. Now, this is not one of those, but what you should do is go online, check out those guides on how to do it, and then watch this video just for the extra little tips to make sure that you get every single box ticked to get that job done so it'll last a long time. Don't be put off buying a used Discovery 3, Discovery 4, Range Rover just because it's got a faulty parking brake. You can rock up and spend your £350 and get that parking brake repaired. So don't be put off by cars that are being sold with a faulty parking brake. You can repair them fairly inexpensively and get a warranty. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed filming it. I really learned something and I really enjoyed my lunch. So thank you for watching. Please come back again soon and I'll catch you on the next one. And if you're hungry at home, I do apologize. Mm. Double quarter pound of cheese, the best burger that McDonald's do, without doubt.